If you're an artist, designer, maker, or any type of creative person, you know the importance of staying on top of your projects, especially if you have turned your passion into a career. In this day and age, there can be an overwhelming amount of apps and devices you can use to do your tasks and track your progress. Should you go the traditional route and do analog or do digital and fix a virtual workspace where you can get things done? Or why not a combination of both? In this video, I'm going to share with you my full productivity system using both analog and digital tools, as well as help you figure out the productivity system that works best for your priorities. Welcome to Productively Creative, a five-part series where I share tips and ideas on how to stay productive without having to compromise your creativity. If you're like me, who loves reading articles and watching YouTube videos about productivity, getting things done, self-improvement, and time management, you'd know that there are a lot of resources you can look up online to know more about these topics. But I rarely see this kind of content specifically made for creatives like us. So if you're an artist and want to optimize your productivity and creativity, Make sure to click on the bell for notifications on our next episode and make sure to subscribe to my channel to know more about productivity, creativity, and getting things done. In the six years that I've worked as an artist, author, and creative entrepreneur, one thing that goes hand in hand in my process is being productive and creative. I've done a lot of experimenting over the years. I've used different tools to plan my schedule, and I've also tried different ways to check tasks off my never-ending to-do lists. And as a self-employed business owner, it's no secret that I do need an effective productivity system to help me get things done because I am working simultaneously on several different projects at the moment, such as writing my seventh book, I'm also running an online shop, I also oversee the community page and approve content from my team, and last but not the least, I have a Patreon art club where I create rewards and share monthly updates and classes to my patrons. And here's the thing, you just can't rely on your brain all the time to tell you what to do and for it to memorize every single thing that is on your to-do list, which is why you need a system that works for you. Now that you know why you need a system, where do you start? There will always be a debate between analog and digital and which one suits best for your needs. And there can also be a mix of both. But at the end of the day, they both have pros and cons you have to consider when you are planning your life and making your productivity system work for you. Also, here's the thing, there's no universally perfect productivity system. Mine keeps changing over the years and until now I'm still changing all of the systems that I'm using because this really matters depending on your current state of life, the type of work that you are doing, and at the same time, where your priorities lie. And of course, if you are an analog user or a digital user. I found that what works best for me is a mix of analog and digital tools. I've always been pro-analog for obvious reasons. I love paper, I love pen, and I am that type of person who cannot leave the house without a notebook on hand. When I have meetings, I always have a notebook, I don't have my phone, and it's always important for me to write things down. There's just some sort of like psychological reason behind it, and I think I am one of those people who firmly believe that writing things down helps me remember things more efficiently. But at the same time, I do have my job cut out for me because all the tasks I do, I guess 90% of them are digital. I have to answer to emails, I have to work on projects, writing my book requires a digital software like my computer, and with that, having a digital counterpart has increasingly helped my productivity in conjunction with my working platter. So I'm going to share with you some of my analog and digital tools so you have an idea on how it works. For my analog tools, the first one I use on the daily is my Hobonichi Cousin. This planner has a daily log, weekly log, and monthly log, and it helps me stay on track on every single thing that I need to do in my life, not just with work, but also my personal life. The second planner that I also use on the daily is my Everyday Explorers Co. Undated Planner, where I write mostly my work deadlines and monthly to-dos, especially with regards to Patreon and community work. So for digital tools, I use a handful of apps to make sure that I get things done. So I have my Apple Notes, Notes, my Hey Email software, Notion, and my Dropbox to store all my files. 
Having these productivity tools, both online and offline, I always get the question, Abby, how do you refrain from redundancy and making sure that your systems don't overlap? That's a very good question and point to talk about because you don't want to get stuck in a system that requires you to do more work. If you're having a hard time getting into your system and doing all the things, then there must be a problem because you want to make sure that your system works for you and not the other way around. In my case, it's been an on and off cycle and I've been learning to be more mindful of how I manage my system. So let me walk you through my digital to analog workflow so you have an idea on how my productivity system works. So I've set up my Notion dashboard to show my monthly, weekly, and daily to-dos. For my weekly to-dos, this is something that I mostly look at on a weekly basis and it's the one I open every week. I schedule via time blocking, which I'll talk more about on episode 2. And if I have any immediate errands, I italicize them so that they have that distinction and it's also a signal for me to get it done immediately at the start of the day. A great tip for people with long to-do lists is to have one main focus per day. This is like your highlight and this is actually the main type of work that needs to be done or main work area. For me, for example, I do stuff like Patreon, book, shop, and that way it's easier for me to pinpoint all of the tasks required for that specific work category. If you have different projects or you want to plot for different aspects of your life, I suggest dividing them up to three to four major buckets. This is what I do because it helps me get a clear idea of all the tasks I need to be done for that specific work area so that your dashboard also doesn't get too messy. You can also input the meaning for each bucket and even the type of activity that you are doing for that bucket. For example, design work, research work, posting on Instagram, etc. Once I've plotted my schedule onto Notion, I then update my Hobonichi Cousin Planner for any last minute changes and any additional tasks. You can start on your weekly spread before moving to a daily spread where you can time block more efficiently. What I like to do is for the weekly spread, I just copy most of the ones that I've already written on my Notion dashboard. It's just easier for me to just reference from that. And for the daily pages, I like to flesh out a bit more information about the type of work that needs to be done. And in case I have notes from a meeting, that's where I put them on my daily pages. And of course, the great thing about having a physical counterpart to your online schedule is that you can decorate it using stationery because why not? As an artist, designing your planner is one more way of making your productivity system really your own. The great thing about using an online platform like Notion is you can always edit things out if your plan changes. And I find that versus me in the past couple of years, I used to write so many to-dos on sheets of paper and then I end up forgetting about it or like figuring out where it goes. But now that I have my Notion dashboard where I list down every single thing that I have to do at a particular point in time, it's just easier for me to use it as a cheat sheet and also as a way for me to plot things more effectively as I continue on with the rest of my work weeks. But hear me out, having an analog planner for me has been very very important because at the end of a week, I always delete my Notion dashboard, especially on the weekly to-dos because I have to refresh and start for a new week. But what I find is like having it on my Hobonichi helps me really track my progress because at the end of the day, I like writing notes about what happened, my progress, my findings on specific tasks. There are tasks that I realize that I can't do in an hour and I might need to take a mental note of that for my future working days and work weeks. And with that, I am able to keep refining the process as I go. And I also am able to figure out what type of system works best for me in terms of should Mondays be admin days, should Tuesdays be shop days. These were all done with trials and errors. And now that I am able to log everything on my Hobonichi, it's just easier for me to refer back and use it as a basis. So I hope this gave you an idea more or less on how my system works. Let me know in the comments below which ones you find will be useful for you or you've tried yourself. But before we end this video, I'm going to leave you with a couple of questions to ask yourself because I want you to come out of this video having something to do about your system and hopefully helping you refine it and find the system that works specifically for you. If you want to start your own productivity system or refine the current one that you have, 
ask yourself these questions. The first one is, what exactly do you do? I want you to list down every single task you work on the moment you wake up. Up to the end of the day, or if you're just specifically doing this for work, then I want you to think about every single thing that happens the moment you start work, turn on your laptop, and answer emails, up to your last email, your last work deliverable, and write them down on a piece of paper or on your notes app. This will help you clarify all the tasks you actually do in a day and hopefully get you going to the next question, whether these tasks are analog or digital. So in short, you have to categorize them. Lastly, I want you to ask yourself which of these apps are working for you and which ones are not. You have to be honest here because it might take a little bit of time or realization to find out that you're still sticking to a system that no longer serves you. I've had a similar experience before because before Notion, I was actually using Airtable, which I don't mind. It's just that I found it a bit harder to use compared to Notion and I stuck with it for a good couple of months. I said, okay, I'm gonna stay here. And then you know what? I realized after a month that it wasn't for me, so I had to move out. So be honest, ask yourself, which ones are working, which ones are not, and make a decision. Make sure to take a screenshot of this homework and comment down below or tag me on Instagram at abbyc with your answers. I'd love to see them. It might need a little bit more experimentation and calibration for you to be able to stay on top of your projects, but it's always, always important to not overwhelm yourself. So I suggest starting basic, even sticking to one app per day or using just one planner to manage your to-do list is more than okay. You can also just buy a plain notebook instead of getting a fancy planner immediately because you might not be able to reap the benefits and get used to this system. So I highly suggest experimenting, looking for different ways on how you can be resourceful in this avenue. For example, if you want to play around with different systems, I highly suggest using bullet journaling as a starting point or getting an undated planner with monthly view or weekly view or daily view depending on your needs. Then you can tweak it along the way and you can keep refining and keep editing. As I mentioned, this is forever a work in progress on your end. So having the tools to be able to refine things and fix them as they go is very, very important. This is also dependent on your behavior as as an artist, as a creator, it's definitely your choice. And in this case, it's definitely your decision. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions, leave them down below in the comment section and let me know if you are team analog or team digital or team both. Thank you again for watching this video and I do hope you enjoy this mini series. We have prepared a lot of fun and exciting things for you because I am a productivity geek and I'm so excited to finally talk about this topic here on my channel. If you'd like to support this channel and would like to meet fellow like-minded creatives, please consider checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash abc where I have an art club for artists and makers and where I hold monthly journaling hangouts, classes, podcast episodes, and exclusive rewards for your creative journey. Make sure to also follow me on Instagram, it's at abc. I'm also on TikTok. And I also have a community page on Instagram where we share ideas and inspiration for your creative journey. It's called at alwaysbecreating.art. Thank you again for watching and please consider also subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It will help this video reach more people and let's all get each other to become more productive and more creative. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video. Always be creating. Bye!